Welcome to Storytime. I'm Pear, and today I'll be reading a classic fairy tale, Hansel and Gretel. And I'll be helping. I didn't ask for your help, Orange. Well, you're getting it anyway. <laughs> great. All right. Once upon a time, there were two children named Hansel and Gretel. And they were really sad because their names were funky. <laughs> Orange, if you don't know the story, then don't say anything. What was that? Nothing. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, now their mean stepmother hatched a plot to ditch them out in the woods. Wow, that's a ditchy thing to do. <laughs> but Hansel and Gretel were smart. On the ground behind them, they left a trail of Reese's Pieces. What? No, breadcrumbs. Nuh-uh, I remember this. It was Reese's Pieces and E.T. thought they were delicious. Mmm, chocolate. What? Dude, that didn't happen. Sure did. And then Hansel and Gretel and E.T. had a dance party. And E.T. showed them his greatest move, the No Pants Dance. <laughs> yeah! Dude! That didn't happen! It did too! E.T. didn't have any pants on, so that's why they called it the No Pants Dance. No! Not that! E.T. has nothing to do with this! Yo, what you talking about? We're doing Hansel and Gretel! Oh, right. <laughs> oh, okay, anyway. Hansel and Gretel get lost in the woods despite the trail they left on the ground. Because E.T. ate the Reese's Pieces. Ah, but they soon came upon a house made of candy that's just incredible. And edible. <laughs> that's right. They start eating the house and suddenly a mean old witch comes out and grabs them and flies them across the sky in front of the moon on her bicycle. No, that's E.T., Orange. Oh, yeah, whoops. I meant a DeLorean. She doesn't do that either, dude. Oh. Pterodactyl, that's right. Hey! There is no pterodactyl! Can you let me finish? Okay, okay. Uh, so the witch takes the kids inside the candy house. Once inside, she tells Hansel to get into the... Griddle! No, it's the oven, but close enough. And so Hansel's super confused now because the witch wants him to stand on top of his sister for some reason. Her name is Gretel. Yeah, that's what I said. You said Gretel. Her name is Gretel. Right, Gretel. 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 We're saying the same exact thing, Pear. We are not. <laughs> Would you let me finish the story? Okay, okay. Just don't say something you'll regret, Gretel. <laughs> <laughs> Hansel and Gretel come up with a plan to trick the mean old witch. Ooh, pranks! This is the part where they trick the witch into sitting on a whoopee cushion, right? Ah! No, dude! Oh, oh, they tricked her into clicking on a video that was actually a wreck roll! Ah! What are you talking about? Yeah, and then they tricked her into eating a cake filled with boogers! What? Gross, dude! Yeah. <laughs> Would you knock it off right now and just let me finish the story? Jeez, okay. <laughs> so Hansel and Gretel come up with a plan to trick the witch into climbing into the oven. They flip it on and voila! They're saved from the witch! Witch witch! Um, the witch we've been talking about this whole time? Witch is witch witch again? Oh, I see. You're just saying the word witch a bunch. But which witch is which? Stop it. <laughs> anyway, Hansel and Gretel get rid of the witch and they... They phoned home! No! That is E.T. <laughs> they phoned home and got to go back to their home planet and they ate a bunch of Reese's Pieces. No, that didn't happen. Yaha! E.T. and Pterodactyl were there too and they ate Reese's Pieces and they danced the No Pants Dance till the end of time. That isn't how the story ends. Yaha! Yes, it is! Yes, it no. is! The end! Oh. <laughs> Orange! Hey everyone, welcome to story time. Today, Orange and I will be reading the story of the ugly duckling. I'm not sure where Orange is, but he should be here any moment. Carrying a cup of sulfuric acid, her for derp 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 Sorry to disappoint you, Orange. Oh, I'm not disappointed. I brought a backup book, too. Shall we begin? Dude, that's not even the same book. You're right. Hmm, this book situation certainly puts us in a bind, doesn't it? <laughs> bind. Orange, I'm telling the story this time. Got it? You're here for color commentary only. Got it. Color commentary. And that color will definitely be orange. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm afraid of. Now then. Once upon a time, there was a baby duck who looked different from all his brothers and sisters. And man, was this dude ugly. Millennials would look at all the other cute ducklings and be all like, aww, and take Instagram 
photos with him. But now with this ugly duckling, when people saw this duckling, they couldn't help but bark a little in their mouths. <laughs> no, they didn't. Well, that's true. They didn't all bark in their mouths. Some of the more forward-thinking millennials decided to take pictures with Ugmo because he made them look better by comparison. <laughs> Orange, stop. There are no millennials taking selfies in the story of the ugly duckling. Yo mama's duckling so ugly, he laid down for a beauty nap and slipped into a coma. <laughs> uh, can we please get back to the real story now? Yo mama's duckling so ugly, he got dropped off for school and they find his mama for littering. <laughs> no. Anyway, the other ducklings always made fun of the ugly duckling. Whose nickname was Ugmo. His nickname was not Ugmo. Yeah, huh? It says so right here in the book. You aren't reading the right book. Oh, yeah. Well, for being honest, I'm not even reading that book. I'm making this all up straight out the dome. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, according to the story in my mind, all throughout his childhood and high school years, Ugmo got teased for being so ugly. Okay, yeah, that's not exactly wrong. The other ducklings were mean to him and called him names. Names like Ugmo, which actually was his name. Orange. Ah. Anyway, so this teasing went on for years. Until the ducks all got back together for their high school reunion. They got to talking and realized none of them had heard from Ugmo for years. They all really hoped he'd show up because it had been a while since they'd been able to make fun of him to his face. And that's when a huge fancy limo pulled up to the reunion and Ugmo stepped out. See, he had grown up into a beautiful swan. What? No, not even close. He'd grown up to be the supermodel Cindy Crawford. Wait, wait, what, what? You're telling me a duckling grew up to be a human supermodel from the 90s? You can grow up to be anything you want to be, Pear. I'm surprised you didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, there's more. Sure, Akmo had the beautiful face of Cindy Crawford, but he was even more beautiful than that. He had Brad Pitt's abs, Taylor Lautner's biceps, Kim Kardashian's rear end, the tail of a Westminster dog show winner, the eyes of the most beautiful snake you've ever seen. Hold on! You're telling me Ugmo grew up to have the tail of a dog, the eyes of a snake, and it was beautiful because of it? Duh! I said it was a beautiful snake, didn't I? And beautiful might not even be a strong enough word. Ugmo is now so stunning. People started throwing up in their mouths because Ugmo is so beautiful to look at. One guy even started crying Ugmo is so beautiful, but Ugmo wiped away his tears with a hundo. <laughs> I'm sorry, a hundo? A hundred dollar bill, Pear. Sheesh. Now that Ugmo was the most beautiful creature on the planet, he was super rich. So of course he had hundos up the wazoo. <laughs> I'm telling you, Ugmo was swimming in it Scrooge McDuck style. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure how this is important to the moral of the story regarding inner beauty, but... Tell me, Pear, have you ever sucked up a spill with a hundo? You should try. They're so absorbent. And they only cost $100. Get your hands on some if you can, folks. They work 50% better than the leading paper towel brand. <laughs> Wait, why exactly is the story turning into a commercial for $100 bills. Yo, what you talking about? $100 bills don't need a commercial. They practically sell themselves. Oh, that's it. This video is over. Look at that absorbency. That's a clinical test right there, folks. They even sop up some beer acid. Uh-oh. No, guess not. Uh, the <laughs> end. Call in order now. Wait, no. <laughs> Welcome to Storytime with Pear. Orange is out buying a new kazoo right now, so we shouldn't have any unwelcome interruptions as we read the story of the three little pigs. Ahem. <clears throat> Once upon a time, black. Orange discovered online shopping and bought a kazoo from home. Woohoo! No! Sorry, Pear, but this orange is round in shape and round the kitchen. <laughs> Ooh, the three little pigs. I love telling this story. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Uh, fine. Just tell it the way it's written, though, okay? Please, not a chance. <laughs> I got this. Straight out the dome, yo. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. And each of these pigs had a little piggy house to help keep them safe from a big, bad worm. <laughs> No, it's not a worm, it's a wolf. Wolf, right, sorry, I read that wrong. You aren't reading anything. <laughs> so the piggies find out this wolf is coming and they all run to their houses. The first little pig, he built his house out of boogers. <laughs> Excuse me? I I'm sorry, I know you prefer the French pronunciation, boogers. It's not the pronunciation I have issues with, dude. The first little pig made his house out of straw. Oh, well, in my version, he uses a straw. That's how he gets the boogers that are way in there, you know? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so the wolf's all like, booger pig, booger pig, let me come in. And the booger pig's like, not by the booger on my chinny chin chin. And the wolf's like, whatevs, that's fine. I'll just hop and pop and I'll blow your house up. 
What? And he did! The Booger House went up like a torch! People three states over were getting bits of boogers falling in their soup like crazy! <laughs> Orange! Okay, okay, I'll move on. So the wolf went to the second pig's house. Now this pig built his house out of sticks! No! Actually, he built it way better than that. Second pig built his house to code and adhere to the OSHA regulations. Oh, wow. Okay, I didn't expect that. And let me tell you, neither did the wolf. He showed up and was really impressed by the quality siding OSHA Pig used. So naturally, Wolf wanted to get the name of OSHA Pig's general contractor. So he said, OSHA Pig, OSHA Pig, let me come in. And OSHA Pig's like, not by the hair of my skinny shin shingles. <laughs> no, brother. Then the wolf goes, then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house up. And let me guess, it didn't work because the house was well built and up to code. Not even close. Wolf used a ton of TNT. That house was gone, baby gone. <laughs> Orange. The whole moral of this story is how taking your time and building a proper house pays off in the end. Jeez, Pear, there's still a third pig we haven't even talked about yet. Let me finish. Yeah, all right, I guess you're right. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Any hoosies, the wolf goes to the third pig's house. Can you guess what his house was made of? Well, in the book, it's bricks. Well, in my mind, it's Bruce Willis's. I'm sorry, the pig's house is made out of Bruce Willis, the actor? Yep, a whole bunch of them. This makes no sense. It makes six sense if you ask me. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. This better be going somewhere, Orange. So the wolf's like, little pig, little pig. And then Bruce Willis pig cuts him off and he's all like, look, we all know where this is going. Not by the Bruce on my Willy Will Willis. Just go ahead and blow up my house, okay? And the wolf's like, you asked for it. Here it comes. And? And he does. Uh, he blows up the house. The final house blows up. That's not how it's supposed to end. Pear, you don't understand. Imagine all those Bruce Willis's flying through the air, riding the blast wave like crazy. Have you ever imagined such a thing? I can safely say I have not. Well, imagine it, darn it. Bruce Willis is flying everywhere, riding the waves, looking super tough, falling into people's soup bowls three states over. <laughs> okay, I imagined it. So, what's the moral of the story? The moral is, um, explosions are awesome. <laughs> Welcome to Storytime with Pear. And Orange. Today we were gonna read the story of Jack and the Beanstalk, but Orange already managed to blow that up. Totally an accident. <laughs> I'll bet. But the joke's on Orange, because I expected something like this to happen, so I memorized the story last night. Yeah. So I don't get to make up my own version of the story this week? Nope. This week we're doing the story the way it was meant to be told. <clears throat> now then. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Jack. His family was very poor, and one day their cow stopped giving milk. Because it wasn't in the mood anymore. <laughs> yeah. So Jack's mom sent him into town to sell the cow. But on his way, he came upon a man with magic beans. Jack thought the beans sounded really cool, so he traded the cow for them. So the cow went home with the man, and they- Orange, hold on. What's up? The story is about Jack, not the cow. What? I thought it was called Jack and the Cow Stock. No, it's called Jack and the Bean Stock. Really? I like mine better. So no more of this cow nonsense, okay? The cow is gone. The cow is no longer part of the story. <laughs> now, as I was saying, when Jack got home, his mom was furious that he had traded the cow for two dumb beans. She threw them out the window. Where they were eaten by another cow. No. And the cow immediately sprouted into a giant cow stock. No. <laughs> And Jack climbed the cow stock to find a giant barn in the clouds. Orange, what is it with you and cows? Too late, Bear. I'm Cow Jack in this story. Yeehaw! No, why do I even try? So Jack went into the huge barn and it was like a cow feast in there. There was every kind of milk, even root beer milk. And there was every kind of delicious grass to eat. And there were so many delicious cow pies straight from the oven. Cow pies? Oh yeah, Jack ate like 50 cow pies. I don't think you know what a cow pie is. And I don't think the giant cow who lived in the barn was very happy when she came back home to find that someone had eaten all of her cow pies. <laughs> this is the grossest story time yet. So the giant cow, she's all like, fee, fi, fo, fum. Cows are awesome and bear is dumb. Okay, she did not say that. <laughs> so the giant cow got super mad when she found Jack. Jack popped onto the normal sized cow and rode it out the door. And the giant cow started chasing them. When it looked like they were goners, the cow Jack was riding was about to tear a pterodactyl wings and started flying. What? Yeah, the giant cow fell off the edge of the clouds and fell way down to the ground. She burst into a million tiny cows. And from that day forward, every 
every person on Earth had their own tiny cow. Oh my God. And Jack flew home on his new cow, which turned out to be a really cool pet because it pooped out golden cow pies. Please, tell me that's the end. It is the end. Good. So, I just wanted to say, I'm sorry I cow Jack story time, pair. Uh, it's fine, I guess. And I made you something to show how sorry I am. Uh, yeah, let me guess, it's TNT. Well, actually, it's not. In fact, it isn't explosive at all. Really? What is it? I baked it. Dude, that's a cow pie. Just taste it. You really like it. No. Get away from me. <laughs> ah, no. Ah. Oh, no. Look out for the blast crater. Oh, oh orange. Oh, some of it got in my mouth. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to story time. I'm your host, Pear. And I'm your co-host, no, for the last time, you are not my co-host. Assistant host? No. Hostess with the second mostest? No. Best friends? No. How about the only one who knows where the book is hidden? Huh? Ah! Orange, what did you do with it? I'll only tell my co-host. Fine, you're my co-host. Whatever. Now where's my book? I ate it. <laughs> now for the story of the porpoise and the pear. It's the tortoise and the hare, dude. Oh, thanks for nothing. I'll take it from here. Once upon a time, there was a hare who could run really fast and a tortoise who could not. Yeah, that tortoise was slow as shell. <laughs> One day, as the hare was making fun of the tortoise for being so slow, the tortoise decided he had had enough and challenged the hare to a fight. No, actually, it was just a foot race. Nah, I like fight better. Well, fortunately, it's not up to you. Now then, Hare was sure he'd win the race. But that's before the tortoise launched into a Rocky-style training montage. Yeah! Huh, must have missed the training montage chapter of the book. Bummer, it's the best one. Lifting weights, jumping rope, running upstairs, getting leg transplants, doing push-ups. Uh, sorry, what was that? Push-ups? Oh yeah, push-ups are a staple of any good training montage. No, 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 before that. Getting leg transplants? Yes, that. Can't say I've seen a leg transplant in a training montage before. Oh, well, the tortoise totally got one. Two, actually. He paid a whole bunch of money and got Usain Bolt's legs. What? Yeah, I'm telling you, it was quite a feat. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's what happens in the book. Oh, and the tortoise went back for more transplants, too. He got Fonzie's head and the wings of a bat. <laughs> okay, now, I know this didn't happen in the book. I mean, look at him. He's barely even a tortoise anymore. Uh, but he is technically a tortoise. He still has the eye of the tortoise. <laughs> oh, brother. Tortoise and hair. Tortoise hair. Tortoise hair. Abomination, but I actually am kind of interested to see who wins the fight. Oh, really? Spoiler alert! The fight's not even close. Because the hare falls asleep and the tortoise wins easily? Shell, no! The hare wins by a landslide! I did mention he had a cannon for an arm, right? I see. <sighs> okay, well, that's what I get for letting you take the lead on the story. Thanks for watching, everyone. We're done here. The end. Goodbye. Nah, but we haven't even gotten to the second training montage. It's Ah, the book isn't soundproof! Ah. 
Welcome to story time. Today, Orange and I will- Hey, Pear, smell my flower. <laughs> no. Uh, why not? Cause it's a prank flower lapel. You're gonna squirt me with water. Nah, -uh, it's real. Then why is there a tube running over to that glass of water? Cause flowers need to be in water to grow. Duh. Go on, smell it. It smells as good as it looks. Uh, Orange, I think today's story is an important one for you to hear. It's called The Boy Who Cried Wolf. And the moral of the story is one I hope you listen to. Well, keep hoping, because I don't have any ears. <laughs> okay, let's give it a shot anyway, shall we? Once upon a time, there was a boy whose job was to watch his town's sheep. As far as jobs go, it wasn't half bad. <laughs> now, the boy did get bored from time to time. Well, sure, counting sheep would put anybody to sleep. And to fight his boredom, the boy would play pranks on the other people in the town sometimes. Pranks? Oh, this story just got good. What'd he do? Whoopie cushion? Saran wrap across the doorway? <laughs> Bug in the ice cube? Horse head under the bed covers? No. Oh. He didn't do any of those things, especially not a horse head under the covers. Where'd you even hear about that? Okay, you know what? Never mind. We're getting this story back on track. Can we get it back on the horse track? <laughs> Stop it! Now then, the prank the boy would always pull was this. He'd run into town and cry out, A horse is eating the sheep! No, it was a wolf. Oh, right, sorry. He'd run into town and yell, A wolf is eating all the horses! No! There are no horses in this story, dude. Easy, Pear. No need to be such a naysayer. <laughs> the boy would run into town and yell that a wolf was eating all the sheep. Which, of course, wasn't true at all. The sheep were all fine. The boy was just pranking the townspeople out of boredom. You could say he really pulled the wool over their eyes. <laughs> That's right. And day after day, the boy kept running into town, crying wolf. What's the wolf crying about? I thought he got to eat all the sheep he wanted. No, the wolf is not crying, dude. The boy is crying wolf. Oh, yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> and also, there is no wolf. The boy was pranking the townspeople, remember? Oh, yeah. So what prank did he do? Rubber chicken? Googly eyes? Saran wrap over the toilet? Huh? Fire huh? None of the above. I just told you the prank he pulled, dude. He lied about a wolf eating the sheep. Oh, yeah. I remember now. Boy, he really fleeced those town folk, didn't he? <laughs> oh, can we please just get this over with? The townsfolk began to catch on over time, and after a while, they stopped falling for the boy's pranks. But then, one day the boy was out in the fields with the sheep, and guess what showed up? A horse! No! SpongeBob? No! Two horses? A wolf! A wolf showed up, dude! Oh, yeah, that makes more sense. So the boy ran into town and cried wolf again, but this time, the townsfolk didn't believe him. They thought he was just pranking them. Oh no, but... But what happened to the sheep? They were eaten. <laughs> by the horse? The horses don't even eat sheep. This story makes no sense. They were eaten by the wolf. Oh, and what happened to the horse? There is no horse. Yeah, I definitely didn't understand this story. Uh, so let me guess, you didn't catch the moral of the story either. The one about not lying or pranking people too much? Nope. So I assume you're gonna keep pranking everyone in the kitchen. Of course not, Pear. I swear, I swear it on this flower lapel. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Pear, here with another episode of Story Time. And I'm Orange, here to ruin another episode of Story Time. <laughs> uh, so glad you decided to join us, Orange. Really? Cause your voice doesn't sound very glad. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, today we're reading Rapunzel. Do you know anything about this story, Orange? Sure don't. Fantastic. So how about we play a game of Mad Libs? I'll let you fill in the blanks in the story as we go. Sound good? Ooh, I like it. Now just to warn you, this story gets pretty nuts. So you're gonna have to get pretty wacky if you wanna ruin it. Oh no, how will I ever be wacky? <laughs> All right, here we go. Once upon a time, there was a husband and his wife who was pregnant with a baby girl. Now the wife, she loved... Okay, Orange, go ahead and fill in the blank. She loved... Radishes! <laughs> That's right! She loved radishes! Huh? That's actually how the story goes. Thank you very much for helping. Oh, um, I, I mean, I, I knew that. Yeah, you're welcome. Now, as I was saying, 
The wife loved radishes so much that she told her husband to get her some radishes from a garden next door, which was owned by a... Which was owned by a witch! <laughs> That's correct! It is? But I was just making a witch-witch joke. Well, it's exactly what the book says. See? <laughs> Now, the husband got caught stealing radishes, and the witch punished them by... Yelling at them! No, wait, that's too obvious. Call the police! Wait, now... Ooh, the witch kidnapped their baby just because they took a couple radishes! <laughs> that's ridiculous. Uh, actually, that's correct! What is happening? I told you, dude! This story is ridiculous! So the witch went off into the woods and raised baby Rapunzel and locked her in a high tower when she became a teenager. Now the tower the witch locked Rapunzel in had no ladder, so the witch got up into the tower by... Well, obviously a witch could just ride her broom up there, so I'm gonna guess that she had never ever cut Rapunzel's hair, so it grew long enough to make a hair ladder down to the ground. <laughs> that is correct. Wow, looks like I might not be able to derail this story after all. It's as crazy as my imagination is. Ha, well, I'm glad you finally met your match. Now, one day a prince was riding by and heard Rapunzel. Chopping radishes. No, actually she was singing. About radishes? Probably not. Anyway, so the prince called out, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your... Radishes! No, oh, let down your hair. Oh, that makes sense. <gasps> Wait, oh my gosh, Pear, the story's starting to make sense. My time to shine. We gotta make some nonsense out of this story. <laughs> oh no. So the prince climbed up the ladder made of radishes, and he and Rapunzel both ate radishes until the witch came back from guarding her radishes. And the prince turned the witch into a radish using his magic radish. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for story time, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully next time we'll... I'm not finished! The prince and Rapunzel got married and had four baby radishes, which they named Radish, 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 and Ukmo. Enough! <laughs> Just kidding. Ukmo's name was Radish, too, and they lived happily radish after in a radish castle, and also the entire world is made of radishes. <laughs> the end! Wait, wait! Can I please have one last word? What is it? Radish! <laughs> no! Would you stop saying... Radish? <laughs> radish! Hello and good morrow, fruit lovers. Welcome to Storytime. I am your co-host, Grapefruit. And I'm your co-co-host, Marshmallow. <laughs> People often come up to me and say, Grapefruit, you're super awesome and super tough. What do you like to read? And I always tell them the same thing. I like to read the scariest, awesomest stories out there. Old Brother's Grim Fairy Tales, like today's story, Little Red Riding Hood. I love the color red. That's why you're excited for this story? Because you love the color red? <sighs> okay, you call my bluff. I actually love all the colors the same. Mashi, are you sure you're ready for this story? Because this ain't your mama's fairy tale. Of course not. My mom already has a fairy tale. All unicorns do. <laughs> Some people find today's story a bit scary. Not me, of course. I'm not scared of anything. But I've heard other people find it scary. I love scary stories. You sure about that? <sighs> okay, you called my bluff again. I tried to warn you. Let's do this! Little Red Riding Hood! <laughs> Once upon a time, Little Red Riding Hood set off to take a basket of food to her sick grandmother. She walked down a path that led through a very dark, very spooky forest. And there were flowers and bumblebees everywhere! And also, it was sunny and not scary at all! Marshmallow, I have the book right here! It explicitly says the woods were spooky and dark! Uh, there can't be any bumblebees! Fine, but they're killer bees! Let's continue. As Little Red Riding Hood walked through the creepy woods. She met a bumblebee and befriended it. Fine, fine, she made a friend. But then she came upon a massive scary wolf. And the wolf was really cute and fluffy and had blue eyes and a pink bow on his tail. <laughs> no, the wolf had fire in his eyes and blood on his teeth. This is a scary wolf and he's the bad guy in the story. I don't understand. <laughs> So the huge scary wolf talked to Little Red Riding Hood and learned that she was headed to her grandma's house. The wolf thought to himself, if I play my cards right, this could be a better day for me. I could eat grandma, Little Red Riding Hood, and those sweet treats in the basket. Ooh, what sweet treats were in the basket? That's not important. I'm imagining cupcakes and bonbons and lollipops and- Marshy, let's not focus on the treats, okay? But how can I focus when there might be lollipops in that basket? I get it now! Okay, there were pies in the basket. Yay! How many pies? Too many pies. Yay! Any 
Anyway, then the wolf ran ahead, ate Grandma whole, and dressed up in one of her nightgowns. <laughs> the wolf put on a grandma's nightgown? That's funny. This story isn't scary at all. Yes, it is. We're getting to the scary part. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, yes. Now then, a bit while later, Little Red Riding Hood came into Grandma's house, and right away she could tell something was different about her grandma. What a smart girl! So Little Red Riding Hood said, Grandma, what big ears you have? Aw, she's complimenting the wolf's appearance. That's so sweet. It's not sweet, Marshmallow. The wolf is tricking her. Oh, I love magic tricks. Not that kind of trick. Anyway, then Little Red Riding Hood said, Grandma, what big eyes you have. Aw, that's so romantic. Finally, Little Red Riding Hood said, Grandma, what big teeth do you have? And the wolf replied, Oh, the better to eat your sweet treats with! No! And then they both chowed down on bonbons and pies together because sharing is caring. And also, Grandma was alive this whole time. And also, the wolf was actually a puppy and the scary woods was actually in Disneyland. Yay! Uh, Marshy, you really wrecked the mood there at the end. Yes, Marshmallow, that is how the dark, sinister Brothers Grimm version of Little Red Riding Hood ends. I knew it! Yay! This ends! Ugh. Welcome to story time, fruit lovers. I'm Orange, and this is... Huh? I expected you to say your name, but that has a nice ring to it, too. <laughs> I'm getting the silent treatment, apparently. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Hey, Orange. Remember yesterday when I yelled at you for playing your kazoo nonstop for 12 hours? Uh, well, yeah, it was the annual kazoo marathon. What did you expect? How else am I supposed to raise money to buy more kazoos? <laughs> well, I yelled too much and now my voice is gone. Looks like you'll have to do today's story, Puss in Boots, all by yourself. All by myself? Woohoo! But before you get too excited, know that I'm gonna be right here next to you making sure you stay true to the story as written. Ah, oh, man. Whenever you get off track, I'll ring my bell. That means you need to go back to telling the actual story. Got it? Yes, I got it. All right, let's ring a ling and do this thing. Here's the famous story, Puss in Boots, which is, of course, about a boots-wearing platypus. <laughs> Okay, okay, he's a cat. You're no fun at all. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a young man. He was the youngest of three sons. They were named Mary, Curly, and Mo. They were named Huey, Dewey, and Louie. All right, their names don't matter, but I choose to give them the nicknames Biff, Beef, and McGillicuddy. <laughs> now, each brother was given something when their father passed away. Biff got Dad's 86 Corvette. His electric guitar. All right, the family mill. Beef got the family spaceship. Jar of teeth. All right, mules. And that left McGillicuddy with just a dumb old cat. Except the cat wasn't dumb at all. He was actually super clever. Also, he could talk because one day he told McGillicuddy he needed a pair of Air Jordans. Clown shoes. High heels. Okay, boots. And as soon as McGillicuddy got him the boots, that cat got to work on turning McGillicuddy's life around. The first step he took in his new boots was to go meet the king. <laughs> Get it? Step? Cause he's got boots? Oh, right, you can't talk. <laughs> well, Puss started bringing gifts to the king all the time. Gifts like annoying orange merchandise, a Nintendo Switch, TNT. Okay, so maybe I don't know what kinds of gifts they gave him, but Puss and the King got real chummy. Then one day, Puss was out in the woods with McGillicuddy, and he heard the King's carriage approaching. Puss sprung into action and told McGillicuddy to get naked. Oh, that's really what he did? Wow. Huh. Well, I thought it would just be a funny thing to say, but sure enough, he asked him to get naked. Man, this is one pervy story you gave me to read, Pear. <laughs> anyway, when the king's carriage came by, Puss ran out and told the king that robbers had taken McGillicuddy's clothes. The king was super chummy with Puss because of the Nintendo Switch. 
Um, indescribable gifts Puss had given him earlier. So the king gave McGillicuddy some fancy clothes and let him ride in the carriage with his beautiful daughter. She fell in love with McGillicuddy immediately because he was still mostly naked. Okay, she loved him because he was a great guy or whatever. But meanwhile, Puss raced ahead to a castle and tricked the mean shape-shifting ogre who lived there into turning into a mouse. And then Puss and Boots ate him! And do you know what that ogre's name was? Shrek! Okay, it wasn't Shrek, but wouldn't it be great if it had been? Would've kept the lid on Smash Mouth's career. <laughs> Anyway, when the royal carriage pulled up, Puss told them the castle belonged to McGillicuddy. King was impressed, and his daughter was definitely impressed. McGillicuddy went along with it too, and they got married based on lies. But I guess that's how it was in those days. And as for Puss in Boots, he became president of the United States. He went on to eat so many hot dogs he exploded? Okay, fine. He lived happily ever after with McGillicuddy. To be continued. <laughs> Just kidding, the end. Hootie ho, Fruity Toots, it's Orange and Orange's best friend. Not true. Back again with another episode of Story Time. Hope you're excited, cause today is the story of Rumpelstiltskin. Runkle who, huh? Rumpelstiltskin, a dwarf with the weirdest name you've ever heard. Well, I don't know about that. I've heard some pretty weird names. Once I met a guy named Sauerkraut. Yeah, dude, that was an actual jar of sauerkraut, though. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, another time I met this guy named Dave. Dave isn't a weird name. It is if you say it aloud a bunch of times. Dave, 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 Orange. Here, Dave, sauerkraut. What are you doing? I thought we were just yelling weird names. Benedict Cumberbatch, Rumpel Sheepskin. For the last time, it's Rumpel Stiltskin. And I'm starting the story now. Once upon a time, there was a miller who liked to boast. One day, he told the king that his daughter could spin straw into gold. The king called the miller's bluff, saying that if it was true, he'd marry the miller's daughter. But if it wasn't true, he'd have the girl beheaded. The king immediately took the girl and locked her in a tower with a spinning wheel and some straw. And you know what that girl's name was? Runkle Schmelstein. That's not her name. Rumpel Welshman. No. Ringo Starskin? Stop. It's Rumpel Stiltskin, and it's the name of the dwarf. Not the girl. What dwarf? There's no dwarf in this story. Because I haven't gotten to the dwarf yet. Oh, is it Little Apple? Is Little Apple in this story? Fine, yes. The role of Rumpelstiltskin can be played by Little Apple. What? I never agreed to this. I don't care. I just want to get on with the story. Yeah, have a little understanding, would ya? <laughs> so anyway, the girl was crying in her lock tower because she couldn't actually spin straw into gold. But that's when Rumpelstiltskin appeared. <laughs> I said, that's when Rumpelstiltskin appeared. Fine. Thank you. You're so not welcome. Rumpelstiltskin had magical powers and proceeded to spin all of the straw into gold. The girl was delighted until Rumpelstiltskin revealed that his favor was no favor at all. It came at a tremendous cost. Ten dollars. Higher. Fifty dollars. Higher. Yeah. If we go any higher, Little Apple won't be able to reach it. <laughs> Orange! What Rumpelstiltskin was demanding was the girl's firstborn child, and he meant it. He vanished, and the miller's daughter got married to the king and became the queen. When she delivered her first baby, Rumpelstiltskin reappeared and demanded she hand over the child. She begged for him to change his mind. Rumpelstiltskin told her that she could keep her baby if she figured out what his name was in the next three days. That's easy. His name's Roomba Silkscreen. Wrong. Rutabaga Rumble Packskin? No. See, even when you know his name, it's not very easy. And the queen had no idea what the dwarf's name was until she went for a walk in the woods late one night. She came upon Rumpelstiltskin dancing around a fire singing, The queen will never win this game for Rumpelstiltskin is my name. Wait, 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 wait. So, this little dude is just dancing around singing about his own name? Correct. This story's weird. Correct. The queen told the dwarf she knew his name was Rumpelstiltskin and she'd be keeping her baby. Rumpelstiltskin was super angry and stamped his foot so hard he created a crack in the ground and he fell down into it, never to be seen again. Huh? Poor Grumble Swillskeen. No. Runtle Greenbean? No. Mark Ruffalo Killscreen. Ugh, close enough. The end. Story time! Story time! Hey, right, gather around, 
lovers, oh. here's gonna read us a really exciting story. I promise you'll be spellbound. <laughs> Little book joke there, sorry. Ugh. Now today's story is called The Emperor's New Clothes. And I'm gonna tell you the way it's written right here. You're not gonna mess it up this time, right, Orange? <gasps> Me? I would never. Yes, yes you would. You do it every single time. I'm so offended. I never mess up your stories, Pear. I enhance them. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. <sighs> All right, here goes nothing. Once upon a time, there was an extremely vain emperor who loved to dress fashionably. He especially loved his annoying orange t-shirt. Available now online. <laughs> orange, would you stop peddling your merch? We're in the middle of a video here. All right, all right. He especially loved wearing his plain green Crocs and unbranded fanny pack. Dude, is that seriously what you think a fashionable emperor would wear? Of course not. Someone as important as an emperor would wear the all new branded annoying orange fanny pack. Orange! <laughs> Good grief. Anyway, the emperor hired two weavers who promised to make him the finest clothes he'd ever worn. Clearly they were referring to the annoying orange Halloween costume for sale online now. They were not. <laughs> they were actually lying to the emperor because they were secretly con men. They actually didn't know how to make clothes at all. Oh, sounds like they needed to buy some pre-made clothes. Have I mentioned that all annoying orange socks come pre-made? <laughs> now, the weavers told the emperor that they were making him a special fabric. A fabric that could only be seen by smart people. Oh, oh, I can see the fabric. That means I'm smart. Orange, there is no fabric. They were lying to the emperor. They only pretended to make fabric. Oh, well, I guess that means I'm dumb. <laughs> no argument here. Now, of course, the emperor couldn't see the imaginary fabric, but he pretended he could because he didn't want the weavers to think he was too dumb to see it. So he pretended to put on the clothes mm. and went out to show off his new suit. Wait, so he was just walking around naked? He sure did. And no one in the entire <gasps> kingdom told him he was naked because they didn't <gasps> want the emperor to think they were dumb for not being able to mm. see his clothes. <laughs> I can't believe he went around naked like that. Although, come to think of it, I do that every day. Finally, one small child stepped forward and said, your majesty, why are you naked? And at that moment, the entire kingdom got online and purchased actual clothing from the Annoying Orange merch site. No! Yep, they all got a hold of their parents' credit cards and did it without permission. Orange, you stop that right now! These prices won't last forever, folks! 